watching online, today we celebrate Ash Wednesday. Our entrance hymn is number 386, Hosea. That's 386. And as we all lift our voice in song, please stand and join in our prayer and celebration. A reading from the book of Joel. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your hearts and not your garments. And return to the Lord your God, for gracious and merciful is he, slow to anger and rich in kindness and relenting in punishment. Perhaps you will again relent and leave behind him a blessing. Offerings and libations for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Proclaim a fast and call an assembly. Gather the people. Notify the congregation. Assemble the elders and gather the children and the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom quit his room and the bride in chamber. Between the porch and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare, O Lord, your people, and make not your heritage a reproach. With the nations ruling over them, 
Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? Then the Lord was stirred to concern for his land and took pity on his people. The word of the Lord. As if God were appealing with us. We implore you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin, who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Working together then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in an acceptable time I heard you, and on the day of salvation I helped you. Behold, now is a very acceptable time. Behold, 
now is the day of salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ,
that we may be drawn into closer union with the Lord. I always love the readings for this day because they remind us and they call us to change our hearts and to bring those hearts closer to the Lord. And the prophet Joel, who is always read on Ash Wednesday, says, even now return to me with your whole heart. And then goes on to say, rend your hearts and not your garments. There's many times when we hear in the prophetic tradition, God calling people to renew their hearts because the season is always about reconciliation and the season is always about conversion and bringing our hearts more closely to the Lord. And the prophets would remind us not to do it for show, as Jesus also challenges us in the gospel. It's not about doing works to be seen by others. It's doing the works because it comes from deep within our hearts. And so he says, rend your hearts and not your garments. You know, in that day, to put on sackcloth and ashes, but to not change your heart is what God would cry out as really an injustice. Because what God is calling them to is to change their heart, to change their ways. And in the prophetic tradition, it was to care for the widows and orphans, to care for those who are most vulnerable in your midst. Maybe this is as Pope Francis calls us this day as an entire world church community to offer our fasting for the people of Ukraine. For us to, through our sacrificial offerings and our fasting this day, to offer it for those who in this very moment are the most vulnerable in our world. Those whose lives are literally being attacked. Those who are fleeing from their homeland. The newest refugees in our world community. And Pope Francis says, let us pray for them. Let us remember. Let us offer the sacrifices this day for them. It's rendering our hearts and doing, if you will, service for those in need. That's the call of our uh, Lenten journey. That's the call to rend our hearts. Not doing something on the exterior for someone else to see, but doing it because it makes us a better person and a person who seeks to unite our hearts more closely with the Lord. It's why in a few moments as we come forward to receive the ashes on our foreheads today, it's a reminder to us that we stand with Christ on the cross, and Christ laid down his, his life on the cross for our sins. And today we are reminded to repent and to believe in the gospel. As we are signed with the ashes, the minister will say to you, repent and believe in the gospel. It's our opportunity to be reconciled with the Lord. And Paul reminds us, this is an acceptable time. This is the time of salvation. Let us rise.
My dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly ask God our Father that he be pleased to bless with the abundance of his grace these ashes which we will put on our heads in penitence. O God, who are moved by acts of humility, and respond with forgiveness to the works of penance. Lend your merciful ear to our prayers, that in your kindness pour out the grace of your blessing. And pour out the grace of your blessing on all of your servants, who are marked with these ashes, that as they follow the Lenten observances, they may be worthy to come with minds made pure, to celebrate the Paschal mystery of your Son. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to invite you to be seated, and you will be able to come forward, kind of like we do for communion, then following that pattern. So I'm going to begin in the center. Atman's going to begin over on this side. And then um, Peg is going to be working her way from this side. You may be seated.
Let us rise and let us lift up our prayers today to the Lord. For our Holy Father, our bishops and priests, that as ambassadors for Christ, they may fearlessly proclaim the need for repentance and reconciliation with God during this time of Lent. We pray to the Lord. For the leaders of Christian nations, that through the grace of this holy season, they may be given clarity of heart and vision, and be sustained with a willing spirit to work for justice and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord. That we who accept the sign of ashes as a confession of our mortality and our faith in the life-giving power of God may make room for that divine life to grow by our hidden deeds of penance and mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For the people of Ukraine who look to the heavens for peace and protection during this time of violence and oppression. And we ask for your mercy. May it change the hearts and minds of those who have chosen the path of destruction. We pray to the Lord. Lord for Dr. Stan Kenwood, who we pray for in this liturgy and for all our departed ones that the one who became sin for their sake may cleanse them all of stain and share with them the joy of his glorious kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, hear our prayers, the prayers spoken, but the many prayers that we made in all of our hearts. We make them through Christ of the Lord. Amen. The Offertory Hymn is number 394, Change Our Hearts, that's right. Oh, that's hurt. Walk by faith, 594, that's 594. 590. sins may become worthy to celebrate devoutly 
the passion of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which we poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Jeffrey and James, Richard and Rembrandt, with all the bishops, 
the clergy, religious, and deacons, and all of your holy people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Bernadette and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Thank you. 
today's announcements. Northwest Catholic School would like to invite you to their Black History Program. It is this Thursday, March 3rd, at 5.30 p.m. here at the church. Again, that's this Thursday, March 3rd, at 5.30 p.m. here at the church. Bingo. That's right, Bingo is starting back up at St. Bernadette's and all are invited to join the fun. If you like to play, the reopening will begin on Sunday, March 13th. That's Sunday, March 13th. If you'd like to volunteer and make new friends, please come to the informational session on Sunday, March the 6th at 3.30 p.m in the St. Bernadette Cafeteria. Yes, refreshments will be provided. Also, on Sunday, March 13th, the St. Patrick's Day curbside will be from 11.30 to 1.30 p.m. Please order one or both dinners. What are they? I'm glad you asked. Corned beef and cabbage, or Irish beef stew over a baked potato. Proceeds of this event will go towards the health ministries at both parishes. Goal is to raise enough funds to purchase an AED machine, or machines, these are defibrillators. Please see the bulletin for more details. The deadline to order is Wednesday, March 9th. Please tell all your family and friends. Limited quantities of little black books with Lenten daily devotions are now available in the back of the church. Let us rise and let us pray. May the sacrament that we have received sustain us, O Lord, that our Lenten fast may be pleasing to you, and be for us a healing remedy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our liturgy is ended. Let us go forth now to love and to serve our God and one another. Thanks. Thanks. Our concluding hymn is number 574, Lead Me, Guide Me, that's 574. <laughs> Thank you.